What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another SCP video. Now, a lot of you guys told me not to check out the animations for the SCP videos, because apparently people were saying they're content farms, they have misinformation and such like that. But I wanted to check out one. Just out of curiosity, this one is created by Dr. Bob, and I heard Dr. Bob is okay. But we're not gonna watch any more animated ones. This is the only one, okay? So this is SCP-173, the new revised entry, this is a very popular SCP, apparently. I think it's one of the OGs, so I want to check it out because everybody's like, how have you watched all these other SCPs, but you haven't watched SCP-173? So SCP-173, all of Dr. Bob's links will be in the description down below. Head over there, hit the like button over there, come back over here, follow along with me, and also hit the like button over here. I would truly appreciate it. Let's do it, guys. A group of three Class D personnel approach the locked containment chamber. One of them is carrying a bucket and mop, but all three of them look jumpy and hesitant to move forward. Oh, An no. An SCP Foundation guard walking behind them gives one of them a push forward with the barrel of his gun, and they continue stepping towards the cell door. Are they the lab rats? I know that the SCP Foundation likes to use convicts as lab rats to see what the SCPs are capable of. Are these guys it? If so, I feel so bad for them. All three of them nervously stare at the heavy locked metal door. Behind it, the sound of stone scraping against metal can be heard coming from inside. Oh no. A second guard standing next to the door asks the three if they are ready. They don't answer, and the guard <laughs> starts to laugh. They never- What an a-hole! Why are you laughing at us? We could possibly die right now, and you think this is funny? You think this is a game? Screw this guard. The guard loudly announces that special containment procedures are beginning now. You know the rules. To maintain eye contact at all times while the other cleans. If you have to blink, do it one eye at a time. And announce before you close even one eye so everyone knows. The guard turns and- One eye? I, I, how do you do that? How do you do that effectively? How do you blink just one eye? I couldn't do that. So if you blink two eyes just once, you're dead? Oh no! He starts to enter a code into the keypad next to the door. Each of the D classes take a couple hard last blinks, taking the last opportunity they have to shut both of their eyes at the same time. Oh Before God! The With a loud hiss, the sealed chamber door unseals. What kind of rule All is right, that? Up, the guard commands. The door opens to reveal a small, dimly lit chamber. There are no furnishings, and much of the metal floor and walls are covered in a reddish brown substance. Ew, what the heck is that? The corner is what they've heard stories and rumors about. The thing that has given them nightmares ever since they learned that they would have to enter its containment chamber. SCP-173. That thing is ugly. Look at its mouth. So they have to continually look at this thing and they can't blink two eyes at the same time. What are, what are the rules for this? Like, I don't get that. That is so specific. Or as most of the staff in the SCP Foundation call it, the sculpture. The sculpture? It looks so unassuming in person. It does Just look a like a sculpture. A concrete figure with a stupid looking spray painted face standing motionless in the corner. The three D classes get another push from the guard behind them and they enter the chamber. The two assigned to watch SCP-173 assume their position in the middle of the room, their eyes locked on the sculpture as the other starts cleaning the foul substance off the floor and walls. It smells terrible, like a mix of old blood and human waste. Oh. The two assigned to watch 173 pay no attention to the one cleaning though. They follow protocol to a T, maintaining their vigil and announcing each time they are going to blink, even if it is only one eye. No way. There's just no way. I could not do this. So the third one that's cleaning, he doesn't have to look at the thing. He can just do whatever. He can even blink two eyes if he wants to or no. The third one continues cleaning, trying his best to keep his own eyes locked on the sculpture as he attacks. Oh no, he has to look at the sculpture also. Attempts to mop around it without getting too close. Yikes. B5933 does his job and doesn't break eye contact with SCP-173. Hurry up! Even though it hasn't moved, he can feel the presence of the sculpture, something within it, just waiting for him to slip up, to let his eyes avert for just one split Oh second. my god! They say that's all it takes. You stop- This is giving me anxiety. I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this at all. <laughs> looking for even an instant and it's all over. With all of the fear coursing through his veins, it is hard to maintain focus. Uh, all to think about is how dry his eyes feel, and blinking them one at a time never seems to be enough. He wants so badly to shut his eyes, to end their itchy, dry feeling, but he can't. Don't. Even with another watcher, 
It's too risky. Don't do it. There's suddenly a loud crack. <gasps> D5933 doesn't move his eyes away from 173. What? He can see in his periphery that the other D-class dropped his broom and instinctively looked down at it. Oh, <gasps> no. Is he dead? Is he going to die? He's going to die, isn't he? Luckily for him, there were others watching. Okay, he's good D5933 then. D5933 shifts in place, taking a step back and bumps into something. Oh, he's starting to panic. He can't look at what it is, but he reaches behind him and feels that it's the other D-class watcher. But wait a minute. Why is he facing the other way? Hey, what? What are you doing? What's going on? He asks, his eyes never leaving SCP-173. What are you talking about? The other D-Class asks back. Wait. You're facing the wrong way. I'm facing the wrong way. You're facing the wrong way. We're supposed to be watching 173. What are you looking at? I am looking at 173. What are you looking at? Is there two of them D5 or something? doesn't know what's going on. Is there like on. a mirrored image? Panic. The one cleaning is focused on his task, trying as hard as he can to quickly mop up and especially... Bro, hurry up. Uh, uh, uh. It's the worst sound D5933 could have heard. Oh, no. The sneeze Whoa. just inches behind his head. Oh, my God. He closed his eyes. Followed by the sound of bones being <gasps> cracked, a scream that was cut off too short, and then a sick thud as a body dropped to the floor. D5933 oh. doesn't even have a chance to scream before a pair of concrete hands grab his neck and his own head is twisted oh. around to see another identical looking sculpture staring back at him. What the hell? Ladies and gentlemen of the O5 Council, we have a problem. Oh, there's the O5 Council. We have to learn about them soon. I think we will. A senior researcher is giving a presentation to a group who remain largely in the shadows, obscuring both their identities as well as their reactions to his horrendous news. SCP-173, through means which we have not yet been able to determine, has multiplied. There's no reaction from any of the 13 figures seated around the large curved table. The researcher in charge of SCP-173 waits for a response, anything at all. So now there's After two of them. None, he clears his throat and continues. <laughs> we gave Awkward. each of the new instances their own designation, SCP-173-1 and SCP-173-2. Very, very creative like i i couldn't have thought of that myself like who would have thought that they could just add a digit one and then two like <laughs> two of the scp D foundation are geniuses the regular cleaning of 173 cell were killed the third was able to keep them both in his line of sight until they could be recontained and moved into separate cells again no that guy is goaded but as you know this wasn't the end of it at some point, the instances of SCP-173 multiplied again, each splitting to form what? yet another instance. SCP-173-1 through 4 are all contained separately, but we don't know if or when another split will occur. The senior researcher waits, but no one... Looks like you all have a problem on your hands. ...until the one seated in the very middle slides a piece of paper across the table in front of him. The senior researcher looks confused. He looks to the mobile task force guard stationed near the door, but he too remains expressionless, eyes locked straight ahead. The researcher, unsure of what else to do, steps away from the lectern and walks towards the table. He picks up the piece of paper and reads it. Object class, upgrade from Euclid to Keter. Orders, continue observation. The okay, so originally it was a Euclid class and now it's a Keter? Senior researcher nods in agreement, thanks the O5 Council for their time and leaves the room. Lights flash and siren blare in the halls of Site-19. It's a containment breach. Facility staff, researchers, and site guards all run down the hall, screaming, trying desperately to get away. There's no hope for any of them, though. In a flash, SCP-173 instances appear behind them, Holy. snapping their necks and dropping them to the floor before moving on to their next victim. There must be dozens of them. Even as a guard tries to keep their eyes on one instance, preventing it from moving, Another appears behind them. Yeah! The staff of Site 19 flee for their lives, screaming for someone, anyone, to help them. The senior researcher presses pause on the video. The terrified face of the senior researcher who gave the last presentation is frozen on the screen. An instance of SCP 1. Poor guy. What a sucker. 173 is directly behind them, its hands wrapped around his neck in a split second before his life was snuffed out. The new researcher giving the presentation looks considerable. So what's the whole point of 173 doing this? Does it eat humans or does it just find joy in snapping their necks? Considerably more frazzled than his predecessor. He explains to the O5 Council that following this horrific containment breach at Site-19, 
at least 61 instances of SCP-173 are now unaccounted for. And that's still unknown not good. They are replicating, but worryingly, there is evidence that the process may be speeding up. Speeding up? Play on a new clip from the security footage, which shows what appears to be multiple instances of 173 working in tandem. Some using their bodies to block exits, others creating choke points in the facility. Ooh. We have theorized that SCP-173... SCP-173 is definitely taking over this facility. It's game over. They're gonna have to create a whole new facility. As we are now referring to the collective instances, may possess a form of hive intelligence. It also appears that this intelligence scales with the number of instances that are nearby. This allowed them to implement tactics that thwarted our containment efforts as they used instances to block our containment teams from being able to pursue others. What you have in front of you is a proposal for revised special containment procedures. What I recommend may sound drastic, but it's what I truly believe is the only way to contain this threat. How do you kill it? Five council members picks up the folder in front of them, bringing it into the shadows that obscure them. What I propose is that SCP-173 instances no longer be kept in containment cells, but instead placed inside of form-fitting metal containers. We can then use SCP-120 to transport the instances to the Foundation site on the lunar surface. The facility will have to be abandoned, of course. It's too risky to maintain a presence there, but each of the instances will be fitted with a tracking collar to ensure that we will be able to detect if any of them are somehow able to escape. The senior researcher waits. After a time... Hey, there it is again. Just put them in space, bro. <laughs> put them on a completely different planet. A paper is once again slid across the table. He approaches and picks it up. He sees that it is the same folder containing the revised special containment procedures proposal. He opens it to find that it has been stamped, approved. Breaking Good job. flashes across the screen. A worried looking reporter appears as though she didn't have time to do her hair or makeup before rushing on air to deliver this special report. She explains that civilian deaths across North America are now estimated to be more than 500,000 people. Holy! In the last 48 hours? The last 48 the hours? Identified creatures continue their deadly rampage across the continents. It is unknown how many of them there may be, but the number of sightings has led some to estimate that there may be hundreds, if not thousands, or even tens <gasps> of thousands of these living, neck-snapping sculptures. The reporter explains that rumors are circulating that the creature can be stopped by maintaining eye contact with it but that this has yet to be confirmed. There is well, it doesn't matter if there's other ones around you. Yeah, you can look at one or two or maybe even three, but as soon as one pops up behind you, you're dead. There's still no official word from the White House or from any members of Congress, and their current location and status are unknown, following reports that most of Washington, D.C. was overrun by the creatures earlier that day. The reporter suddenly stops speaking, and a terrified look comes over her face. Her eyes locked on something just off screen. It's Someone SCP-173. Oh! SCP-173 standing over a dead cameraman. There's a scream. And the Snapped his neck. To the reporter <gasps> now lies dead on her desk. Her head <laughs> twisted 180 degrees. This is before there's another crazy. Sound, phone's breaking and the feed goes dead. A woman in an SCP researcher coat sits at a computer terminal in a secure bunker, a large jeweled medallion around her neck. Personal log of Dr. Bright. From the little news I've been able to gather, it sounds like SCP-173 has besieged and destroyed four Foundation facilities pretty much simultaneously in the last 24 hours. That's ridiculous. Each instance shows the same strength as the original, and thousands of them working together are capable of ripping open concrete bunkers and compromising foot-thick steel doors. Holy crap. I have been killed 37 times in the last week. They can smell me, somehow, regardless of what body I'm in. The majority decision of the remaining O5s is that- Wait a second, did I just miss what she said? Go back? ...together are capable of ripping open concrete bunkers and compromising foot-thick steel doors. I alone have been killed 37 times in the last week. I have been killed 37 times in the last week? Does this amulet revive her? They can smell me, somehow, regardless of what body I'm in. The majority decision of the remaining O5s is that this is an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario unfolding. And what it's sounding gonna like the problem or else the russians are they're evacuating this base which means there won't be a single foundation scientist anywhere in the new world they say they're going to try to evacuate the surviving civilians but i doubt it and there can't be more than a couple hundred people in all of north america anyway right i managed to make it down to a secure bunker but who knows how long it will be until they're able to get in i don't think there's any chance i can get out either i'm running out of food and i'm not sure which will get me first hunger the sculptures or what I know the O5s will inevitably do.
I think I would rather just have that thing snap my neck. Let's be honest. Snapping your neck, it has to be quick. That thing is very strong. It's powerful. It should be able to snap my, my neck in seconds. I won't even feel it. Dr. Bright closes the computer terminal and sits back in her chair. She looks up at the ceiling of the bunker where the sound of concrete scratching against metal. Oh, the no. Falls. They're here. A sullen and tired looking researcher steps out of a room in the makeshift foundation site that has been established just outside of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. He's holding a piece of paper and closes the door behind him, which has had O5 Council authorized entry only hastily painted on the outside. A small group of foundation staff are waiting for him. They've gathered to hear what the overseers have decided to do in the face of this world ending disaster. The researcher looks around at his colleagues' faces, and as they make eye contact, any hope they had is quickly replaced by the bad news they know is coming. Are they going to bomb the to read. entire country? Revised special containment procedures. Containment zone X1, formerly North and South America, is to be denied access. Following saturation nuclear bombing, the number of... S they are. I knew they were going to do that. Jeez. But the whole continent is getting bombed. CP-173 instances has been reduced. All available foundation resources are to be redirected to monitoring the ocean to ensure the integrity of containment zone X1. Foundation okay. adjuncts from national navies are to perform around the clock patrols and sonar sweeps. Detected instances are to be contained and removed to SCP-120 for transport to the lunar containment site. That's it? One of the staff members asks. That's it, the researcher replies. Several of those present <laughs> begin to cry. There's Man. nothing more they can do. No. Their homes, their friends, their families, all of them are gone. Kill at this point, you're just delaying the inevitable. I don't understand why you would want to be alive at this point. Your friends are gone, your family, the world's gone. What's the point? Either by the neck-wrenching sculptures or in the heat of a nuclear blast. Why? Why did they have to do it? One of the other staff who appears to be a former site guard asks. That's all we could do, another argues. There's much disagreement in the small crowd. No matter how- What happened to that about, guard in the beginning? The is he still laughing? The O5 Council. Their word is law especially in a world where all law and order outside of the foundation has broken down. There really was no other option. All they can do now is hope that the sacrifice of two whole continents was enough to keep it contained. That SCP-173 is unable to cross the ocean to Europe and that they remain safe on this side of the planet. You better hope so. The group grows quiet, mourning the loss of the world they once knew. When the silence is suddenly interrupted by someone running down the hall, it's another researcher carrying his own piece of paper. He now, what does this guy the have? Towards the O5 Council's door, insisting that they let him through, that he has important news that can't wait. What is it? Demands the group. We deserve to know. The group wrestles the paper away from the junior researcher, and it is passed through the group to the same man who read the revised special containment procedures. He quickly reads the report. It's just a couple of lines, and his face goes white. What's happening? What is it? What does it say? Comes a question from the crowd. A message from the North Atlantic Navy General Command. Verified sighting of SCP-173 in the United Kingdom. It's Nuclear over! Authorized and executed. No survivors. SCP-173 has come for them. It's over! I hope you enjoyed this special exploration of the SCP oh, Foundation God. SCP-173 revised entry. If you liked this, then be sure to watch the first SCP, SCP-001, the prototype. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more like this, and make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. This wasn't that bad. Like, I feel like that was pretty solid. Obviously, I don't know the original story of SCP-173, so I haven't read, like, the original content, but, I mean, this felt pretty good i wonder if there was any misinformation here if there was let me know i'm actually gonna go read the scp myself just to make sure that i get the original experience and i get the information that you guys got as fans because i don't want to just rely on the animation i feel like i should delve more into it now i trust volgan i feel like volgan's videos are really accurate and he seems to really care about them being accurate so those videos, I just kind of like automatically trust for sure. Now, this was a revised entry, so it's a little bit different. The original SCP-173 is Euclid, and I'm kind of curious to what its story is. It's probably the same thing, you know, the whole eye contact thing, other than it being 
something where it multiplies, it's probably exactly like this story. This story just kind of like ups the ante a little bit where it multiplies and then it destroys the world and such. Whereas the original story is probably it just being something that they found and it doesn't multiply or anything like that. It's nothing like crazy where it's going to destroy the entire globe. But this was very interesting. I kind of like how the animation was made and Dr. Bob has a really nice voice. Like that voice is really solid. Go ahead and like Dr. Bob's videos. I think this was a pretty good video for the most part. Subscribe if you're new. Like I said, this is the last time we watch an animation. I just wanted to check out one and I saw somebody in the comment section say that Dr. Bob's videos are pretty good, but I don't want to continually watch Dr. Bob's videos because I don't want anybody complaining about them being, you know, not the right content. It's misinformation and stuff such like that. So we're just going to go back to checking out Volgan. And there was another channel that people were telling me about. So I'll go and watch that one too. But that was crazy to see SCP-173 literally destroy the world. And the plot twist at the end where they thought that they were going to be okay. They thought that SCP-173 was contained, ended up being incorrect. SCP-173 made it to the UK, and you know once it's there, it's game over, guys. Like, there's no point in even wanting to be alive at that point. It's just like, what, what do we do? But I wonder why they didn't sick one of the other SCPs on SCP-173. Like the reptile one that we saw in the last video, that could take SCP-173, couldn't it? And I'm still curious to why SCP-173 likes to snap people's necks, but it doesn't do anything else to people. It doesn't seem like it eats people at all, other than we saw like the reddish grime or whatever that was in that original cell, which makes me think that it was eating people, but I'm not entirely sure. So with that being said, you guys can answer the questions down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time. Hope will never die.